Hello crafty friends, welcome back, or if you're new here, hello for the first time, my name is Laura. It has been a while since I've made a video and I'm so excited to be back with this three-part mini Halloween series to make a decorative kind of witch's kitchen display. Today's part one and we're going to be making these potion bottles and if you stick around for part two and three I'll show you how to make the spell box and also how to make a bubbling cauldron and a realistic fire. Okay, so to get started, you're going to need some bottles. I have a few different bottles here. Um, some of them are alcohol bottles. Some of them are like that really pretty oval one that used to have bubble bath in it. This one here is a soy sauce bottle. You can definitely go digging through what you have. I love this one. It's sun-dried tomatoes and it's got those cute little handles on the side. I did stick with all glass. You could definitely use plastic for this, especially if you're gonna be doing this craft with with younger children but I decided to go for glass so I dug through all the recycling picked out as many different jars as I could this clip jar here is actually a jar that I had purchased I've got a whole bunch of these that I got for craft projects that surprise never finished um, and also these little teeny tiny jars these I actually picked up from the works here in the UK they come with a cute little stopper this one again is a gin bottle. It is darker, but that's okay because I'm going to be painting all of these a wine bottle, twist top, because classy. Um, and then I use this sticky stuff remover. This is wonderful. This helped me to get the labels off of all of these jars. I soaked everything. Some of the labels peeled right off. Anything that didn't, grab some sticky stuff remover, wipe it over the top of the label, let that sit for a second, and then it scrubs away. This one here, it is from Poundland. It comes already decorated, but it was a little bit damaged and it's red and I wanted everything to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and um, paint that one up and change it. For my painting, I have some spray paint. This is a matte black spray paint. I didn't want them to be glossy and shiny because it doesn't really fit with that kind of witchy vibe. And then I've got this blackboard paint that I picked up from Amazon that I will have linked in the description below. And I just went ahead and used some sponge paint brushes to dab the paint on. I found that this chalkboard paint actually took to the glass really, really well. It was very easy to apply. The hardest thing was um, trying not to get it all over my hands. So I tended to kind of start at one end and cover as much as I could while still holding the bottle. And then I'd set it down and um, let that dry and then I'd be able to pick it up and work from the other end. So here's one I did earlier and you can see the difference between how matte that chalkboard paint is when it dries compared to when you apply it fresh and it looks a little glossy. So it will kind of turn more matte, it'll lose that shine as it dries down. So then I moved on to the spray paint and even though it's a matte spray paint, I found it was a little too glossy for my liking. So I'm just showing you here, I worked outside inside of a box for the mess and gave it two coats, but when it dried, it was a little bit too shiny. So I did paint over it with the chalk paint. And look at those bottles. They already look so spooky. <laughs> So here I've got a whole bunch of labels that I just used my printer to print out and I didn't design any of these myself. I found them all through Google searches and I'll have some links below to those and I've just carefully cut them out, scrunched them up and then I'm going to unfold each and every one of them and then I'm going to go ahead and scrunch them again. And this is just to give it a really aged look. I did print these all on white paper. You can see they're white on the back. Um, but if you can't find any images that are kind of vintagey looking and distressed like this, you can always do like a tea stain on the paper to make it look old and a little bit disheveled. We don't want any of this to look too perfect because that's not how I picture a kind of witch's kitchen vibe to be. So I do want to take a second to say shout out to Claire's Crafty Corner who has some incredible videos on potion um, bottle making and I'll link her channel below as well because she was definitely a huge inspiration for this video so I just want to make sure that I acknowledge that. None of what I'm doing here is unique I guess, this is just my take on how to do these potion bottles and the same for the other two videos in this little Halloween mini series. 
So I started off with the wine bottle and I'm using a mixture of PVA glue and water to attach the, uh, the label. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue and twine for the bottlenecks. I do this for most of the bottles where it's got kind of an extended neck like this. I just think it looks really pretty. And for all of these, I'm just essentially taking little Halloween decorations or pieces of burlap or twine or hot glue and creating a bit of a design onto the bottle. Anywhere where I add glue and you can kind of see it, so some of the edges around where I've stuck the labels, they had a little bit of shine to them from the PVA glue. So I do go ahead um, when I'm finishing these up and just brush some more of that chalkboard paint over the top. Okay. We are fully twined. <laughs> now, I'm trying to attach this rubber snake to this bottle. I thought this was a brilliant idea. I was gonna have this snake kind of, well, snaking around the bottle, and then I'd go ahead and paint him black and maybe give him some red eyes, and I was really excited about it. I could not get him to stick. <laughs> if anybody knows how to get a rubber snake to stick to a bottle, please tell me. I tried hot glue, I tried multi-purpose super glue, I was cable tying him into place so it, there was a whole load of pressure kind of sticking it in place as I was going through. Um, unfortunately none of it worked so I did end up having to peel off the snake but what was kind of cool is um, some of the glue was left behind so it almost looked like peeled snake skin so there we go, you live and learn. So moving on to the next bottle, this is an old coffee jar and I've got the wing of bat label. So naturally we've got to add some bat wings to this one, but first of all I'll go ahead and stick the label. I added all of the labels in the exact same way, just using that basic PVA glue mixed with water. You could use Mod, uh, Mod Podge, you could even get away with a glue stick. So then I'm gonna take this uh, decorative bat. These are really inexpensive. You can pick them up pretty much anywhere. They tend to be in the inexpensive craft um, section or sorry, Halloween decorating section, kind of where you'd get the spider web with the spiders in it. And I'd cut that apart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the edge of this jar. I'm not gonna show you all of the jars. I'm just trying to give you a flavor for each of the different techniques, I guess, or styles that I went for. So this one, I'm adding some burlap. I've cut a hole in the middle of it because I want to be able to put the lid on firmly. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna use these jars for anything, but who knows in the future, I might put stuff in them. Um, but for now, I just wanted to know that I had the option that the lid would come on and off without too many problems. So here I'm just kind of manipulating that burlap fabric to make sure it sits exactly as I want it. And I am using a finger protector because hot glue is hot and I didn't want to burn my fingers. So here I've got these adorable bat wings. I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue and stick them to the side of this lid. And just hold it in place for a few seconds while that glue dries up a little so I can let go and it will stay in place. And I think this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I really like this little bat wing jar. Maybe that's just because I really like the fact that it used to have coffee in it. And um, yeah, I like coffee a lot. <laughs> so I have really enjoyed decorating for Halloween this year. I'm not going anywhere because it's 2020 and that's just not what we do anymore. We don't go anywhere or see anyone. So I have decorated truly just for myself and um, I really enjoyed the process. It was nice to kind of get back to crafting. It's been a while since I've shared a video. I apologize for that, but um, it's it's been a lot this year. So it's nice to be able to share something fun and silly. And I hope to have some more Christmas videos as well. So here we've got an eyeball. <laughs> this is essentially a ping pong ball that has an eyeball painted onto it. I didn't paint this myself. I bought it ready done as a design. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick it to the top of this bottle. In order to make it lie flat and not have that kind of small surface area of the bottom curve of the ping pong ball, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that away so it's a little bit flatter. And then I add some hot glue and stick it onto the top of the lid. And it was a bit too clean with that white edge. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some paint. This is just regular brown acrylic paint. And I'm going to water it down so it's more of a wash rather than covering up the detail of the eye. 
I maybe added a little bit too much water, um, but I'm happy with the color and how it turned out in the end. And you will actually see these eyeballs, not this exact one, but another one from the same packaging being used in my next Halloween video for one of the potion books, which, ugh, oh, they turned out so good. I was really pleased with how they turned out. In fact, I've loved all of these crafts. So do make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to be notified when that video has uh, been posted. If not, check back in a few days and you should see it right there in the newsfeed and you'll be able to see how to make the corresponding spell books. Okay, spider warning. There you go, spider warning. Anyone that doesn't like spiders, skip ahead because there is a pretty big one that I'm about to turn over. This is for my, what was, my bubble bath bottle and it's a jar that says it contains leg of spider and I thought, Ugh, what better than to have this giant 3D, I mean it's not even a spider, it's a tarantula isn't it, let's be honest, it is huge. Um, so we decided to put him on, we, I mean it's just me, I decided to put him on this bottle and then have a couple smaller spiders as well. These are just inexpensive little plastic ones, I think they actually came in the packaging with the bats if I remember rightly. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and glue those down and I did paint the lid of this bottle black as well. It's still glass at the moment on the screen but I went ahead and painted that off screen. So if you are feeling inspired to try any of these crafts, I love to see other people's recreations of these crafts. So do feel free to tag me on Instagram at craftynotshifty and I've also recently joined TikTok. I don't really know what I'm doing, makes me feel very old, but if you're on TikTok and you want to say hi or see anything that I post, you can follow me on there and I believe it is crafty underscore not underscore shifty. I'll leave it in the description. <laughs> So it's a classic, a spider web. We had to have a glue gun spider web on this bottle. And then I went ahead and added a couple more glue gun decorations. This one, I added a star. It's not hugely Halloween, but kind of, kind of witchy. I liked it. And once that glue is completely dry, I do go ahead and add another coat of the black paint over the top. So now we have the rat. Do we need a rat warning? There's about to be a rat on the screen for anyone that needs a warning. I hope somebody didn't skip from the spider to the rat and now they're just terrified. Um, in fact, let me know. Let me know what you're afraid of in the uh, comments below if you've made it this far. <laughs> Are you afraid of spiders, rats, mice? Like what, what Halloween stuff scares you? Okay, we cut the belly out of the rat. It sounds cruel, I know, but he can't feel it. It's okay. And it was for a good reason. <laughs> it was to decorate the top of this bottle. So I was able to put the cork inside of that hole that we made in the belly. And then the cork just fits nicely on top of the jar. And it, I mean, that's a pretty cool decoration. <laughs> I believe this bottle contains, I think it's rat's brains. It's maybe a slightly big bottle for what would be needed. Who knows, maybe they're smart. Anyway... The outside of the bottle was a little bit plain, so I decided to add a few decorations just using my glue gun, just some squiggles and zigzags, and that was it really. I waited for it to dry, and then I painted it black. So now we have my clip jar. Again, I'm just adding some burlap. I didn't need to cut a hole in it this time. It just rests inside of that clip, no problem. And then I'm pulling away some of the threads just to decorate the outside. I went ahead and did the exact same thing as I did earlier with the burlap, is just added some glue and kind of pinched and tucked it so it, it just fits nicely. It's a little stiff so it kind of just juts out to the sides um, unless you stick it down in a couple spots with some hot glue. Okay, then last but by no means least, we have the teeny tiny little jars. And um, I think it'd be kind of cool to make a miniature version of all of this. But um, yeah, I liked the mix of the big jars and these tiny, tiny little ones. And for those, because they're so small, I didn't add much in the way of decoration. Just the label and then popped the corks on the top and that was enough. They just look so cute. And so there you have it. There's a whole bunch of different ways to decorate these bottles. You can use glue-based decorations. You can stick stuff on to create the decorations. Um, you could just paint them and leave them. But here we have them all drying. And here they are in my Halloween display. I am so 
so pleased with how these turned out. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Make sure you check back and uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified when my next video posts, which will be the spell box. And then I'll round out this mini Halloween series with my cauldron and fireplace that you can see in the decoration window display that I have going on. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you back here again soon, but that is all from me. Bye for now.